For more on this, we're joined by Steve Malloy, founder of JunkScience.com. He was a member of President Trump's EPA transition team, and he's the author of Scare Pollution, Why and How to Fix the EPA. Steve, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, Dan. Thanks for having me. Not only are they going to strand us in our vehicles during the winter, they're going to starve us out if uh, <laughs> these uh, eco-supremacists get their way. Yeah, well, it's been obvious for about 60 years now that the green goal is to have less people. Um, you know, we have eight billion, more than 8 billion people on the planet that were brought to us by fossil fuels and, um, you know, more food production and other technology, chemical technology. And so the Greens are now attacking all that because they want to get global population back down to about 2 billion people. That means 75 percent of us have to get off. And, you know, that that is really the goal of the attack on our energy and food production systems. Uh, I note uh, on the, uh, the the first part of what I said, stranding us in the winter, the EVs, that uh, the EPA is uh, sort of uh, discarding what the Supreme Court had to say with respect to their powers the same way that Joe Biden did yeah. on the student loan issue. Um, tell us about this uh, EPA rule that's been uh, promulgated to... Uh, that doesn't explicitly say phasing out uh, gas-powered cars, but has the effect of doing so. Right. So the Biden EPA last week issued tailpipe emission standards for carbon dioxide, uh, which are so stringent that basically there's no technology for meeting them. And the only way car companies are going to be able to meet those standards is by converting their fleets mostly to EVs, because uh, the government counts, uh, calculates the uh, emission standard across the whole fleet. So uh, two-thirds of what car makers sell are going to have to be EVs. It's, it's, essentially, it's a de facto EV mandate. And, of course, this is uh, patently illegal. Uh, Congress um, has arguably <laughs> empowered EPA to regulate uh, carbon dioxide out of tailpipes, but not – not to do so to so as to create an EV mandate. So this is an overreach by EPA. It violates the recent Supreme Court decision in West Virginia versus EPA, which basically says, look, EPA, you can only do what Congress authorizes you to, to do. You can't just go off and, and you know create your own laws and do what you want. And and right, and so so you're at you anticipate that this rule will be struck down. Yeah, uh, I, this is going to be a West Virginia versus EPA, which was the Obama Clean Power Plan, and that was halted by Justice Scalia in his last decision uh, as soon as the EPA made the rule. Uh, when when this is halted, who knows? Uh, Scalia, Justice Scalia is, is now dead. Um, you know, uh, we have a conservative court. I'm sure ultimately this will be stopped, but who knows when and what sort of damage to the car industry this rule will do. You know, and this is what the Biden administration is trying to do. They're trying to cause chaos among, you know, in the fossil fuel industries, car makers, uh, the natural gas industry, the coal industry, uh, just just trying to cause uncertainty and chaos, which, um, you know, they hope will uh, accrue more more power to the government, which is what this is all about. Well, well, what about on a state level, though, with Gavin Newsom? I mean, shouldn't California become its own country? Because if, you, you know, if, well, if we drive gas cars, because I'm not going to get an EV anytime soon, if never. And you, you, you got to gas up if you want to go visit friends and loved ones in California. And he wants that gone. Yeah. So, Amy, the, you know, the problem with California is California has the de facto power to set national fuel economy standards. And so, you know, because it's such a big market, it's uh, you know, this huge state. And when it, the Trump administration revoked California's ability to do that, one of the first things the Biden administration did um, was to you know, give California that power again. So California is using its power over the car industry to you know, help mandate EVs. Um, you know, it's, it's, really, <laughs> it's really unbelievable. You know, if there's a Trump 2.0, you can bet one of the first things to go is going to be California's power over the car industry. Well, that, this is this is important because the the, the California Air uh, Resources Board, which banned the sale of new gas power cars in the state by 2035, you know, consistent with the Newsom mandate. I mean, they're they're striking these deals. You know, you've 
then these big car companies uh, are rent seekers. Uh, they want access to the market for the reasons you just described. So Stellantis and California struck a deal this uh, last week to protect the state's electric vehicle mandate from future political and legal challenges. There's also reporting by the Wall Street Journal that uh, this same uh, pollution board struck peace deals with Ford, Honda, BMW, Volvo, Volkswagen, um, um, and the, these automakers committed to voluntarily follow California's mandate and oppose participating in any trade association legal challenges to it. So, you know, they're buying off the industry that would otherwise present the challenge. Uh, that's absolutely right. I mean, fortunately, there are other people that will have stand, standing to, change, to challenge all these rules. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. That's what the left is trying to do. They're trying to buy everybody off and, and blackmail them and whatever they can do to get them not to challenge these rules, uh, hoping that no one else can sue. But, of course, there are all sorts of car dealers in other states uh, that will be filing suit. So, you know, this will all go to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court will will trash all you know this, all the EV mandates. The only question is, what's the timing of that, and how will it affect the market? Just going back to where we started, what do you, what do you think about uh, what you've seen in Ireland and Amsterdam and Canada elsewhere with respect to farmers in particular, like leading this revolt, uh, serving as the canary in the coal mine for? Uh, you know, some some segments of the Western world that have um, no appreciation for the implications of these feel good policies they're promoting. And, you know, farmers like that Irish farmer we heard from saying, look, you're cutting this sort of ag production. You are you're not if you think you've got food inflation now, uh, not to mention just the global food supply when you have Western uh, the, the, the developed Western world. Uh, trying to help and aid the developing world when it comes to making sure people don't starve to death, for God's sakes. Yeah, so this is the problem. You know, the the Greens run the government in Europe, and, um, you know, they are coming for food production, and they are coming for the farmers, and uh, people people have a hard time believing um, that the government is really going to decrease food production. Um, the farmers as you pointed out, are the canary in coal mine, no doubt about it. I'm only concerned that they are going to sell out too cheaply because, you know, the, the European Union and the various countries are, you know, throwing farmers the bone right now to, you know, quell this sort of uprising. And, um, you know, n now we're getting into growing season, so the farmers are going back to work. And I'm concerned that, you know, the whole issue may go away because by the time, you know, next winter comes around, the farmers, you know, don't have anything to do but protest. They won't because, you know, the government will have figured out a way to block this. Um, you know, people people have, have not yet dialed into the fact that this green agenda ha offers, um, you know, it's not about the climate. It's about the government controlling everything. And the farmers, you know, they've got the right instinct. They're being squeezed. Um, they know that food production is going to be cut. They know that's not going to be good. All that is correct. Um, what most people don't understand is that the reason they're doing it is really twisted. This whole green agenda is not about the environment. It's not about the weather. It's not about the climate. It's all about political power. Um, you uh, were on Trump's EPA transition team. You mentioned, uh, you know, this uh, a Biden. Well, what this this this. The, the deal cutting that's going on in California is something that Trump will should do uh, very early on if he is reelected. Um, what should Trump do about the EPA? What did, what did you uh, try to do when you or or successfully do? Um, uh, well, what did the EPA try to do or successfully do? Transition team that you were a part of, and then and 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 what should what should happen in twenty twenty five if if he is uh, elected again? So the first thing Trump did was just sit on the EPA. There were no new regulations for those four years, and that's one of the reasons the fossil fuel industry boomed and we became energy dominant. And we had a great economy because we just sat on the EPA. And we were in the process of reforming it. We had uh, a number of reforms had been implemented, but of course, you know, uh, Biden reversed all that. Um, you know, President Trump's original sort of mission was to shrink EPA down to a very small part of, of what it was. And I'm hoping that, you know, we'll be able to try to do that again. Um, you know, when the EPA was formed in 1970, 
uh, there, you know, there wasn't much environmental protection going on across the country. States did not have their own EPAs, but now every state has its own EPA. The vast, vast majority of environmental protection our bosses owe you in up. the states. Um, and shrink the U.S. EPA down by a lot. Steve Malloy, founder of JunkScience.com, member of President Trump's EPA transition team and author of Scare Pollution, why and how to fix the EPA. Steve, thanks as always for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dan. Yeah, bye-bye. Thanks, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. The stories you need to know to start your day. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. This is Dennis Prager. Now you can listen to my show when it's convenient for you and without censorship from big tech. Become a member of the ultimate online community for all things Prager. It's PragerTopia Unlimited. Listen to every radio show over the last 10 years, all commercial free. You can even listen to all my Torah teachings for free. Join today and save 25% off the first year and get a free PragerTopia coffee mug. Go to PragerTopia.com or click the banner at DennisPrager.com. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies Supplements, changing the world one life at a time. When I go out, I take a bottle of each because sometimes I end up talking to people in the restaurants here. Someone looking at them, I say, oh, this isn't a Christmas decoration, this red and green. This is my balance of nature. I tell people all the time I'm happier and I feel better. I love this product. It's done so much for me, it's not even funny. And don't think I'm not talking to everybody that I know about it. Call 1-800-246-8751 or go to balanceofnature.com and sign up as a new preferred customer. And for a limited time, get 35% off your first order plus $10 off any additional sets. Go to balanceofnature.com or call 1-800-246-8751 and get this special offer by using discount code CHICAGO. Quick delivery service. What do you need delivered today? Hi, I'm trying to work through a last-minute to-do list for my boss. Can you deliver a hard drive to the Loop in Chicago? We can deliver that today. Okay, can you deliver 20 boxes to a client in Rockford? We can deliver that today. Can you deliver 12 pallets of tile to our customer in Naperville? We can deliver that today. Can you deliver a large envelope to Northbrook? We can deliver that today. Oh my gosh, I think my water just broke. Can you... We cannot deliver that. Quick Delivery Service delivers your package no matter the size. More than just a messenger service, Quick Delivery Service is a messenger and trucking service that can also provide scheduled routes for your daily delivery or your air shipment. Trucks are equipped to handle the load and provide ground level service for same day delivery. The Quick Delivery Service team of safe licensed professionals can provide quick door to door service for your special delivery. QuickDelivery.com. That's QuickDelivery.com. We deliver that today, but we don't deliver this. (laughs) 